This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m. Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today. I'm James Just. In the center, we have John Cameron. At the end, we have our co-host, Mr. Richard Fields. Gentlemen, this was a disturbing weekend. A libertarian activist was killed at a rally in Austin, Texas. Facts, as these things are, in dispute. But I think what we can can acknowledge is that any loss of life in protesting about police abuses or the loss of life is a human tragedy beyond kind of comprehension. I think, uh, John, do you have anything you wanted to add to that? I don't know. The guy was libertarian. But... Um shows you how well I read the news. It's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm of, of two minds about this stuff. You know, I mean, uh, I, I love the fact that, uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, people are, are uh, making their voices heard and protesting and uh, they have, you know, based on that constitution that I swore to defend um, the right to do that. I, I hate it when it turns into looting and cop baiting and, uh, and the rest, uh, the fact that, um, you know, people show up, I'm a big gun rights advocate, so I have no problem uh, with people carrying guns, but when people show up to uh, emotionally charged events carrying guns um, and repeatedly do that and are confrontational with other people, you pretty much figure that it's like Russian roulette and eventually, um, you know, somebody's going to get shot. But um, I mean, who knows? I, I I think it's I think it is it's a horrible shame, you know. The the uh, the young man, um, you know, is exercising a First Amendment right and Second Amendment right, and and this white guy, from what I understand, based upon the press stories, uh, with a black girlfriend, and you know, he's faced um, what he sees is a lot of kind of institutionalized racism and socialized racism, and and he was out there trying to do his part. So it's, it's a shame. Um, it'll be interesting to see if we ever get the facts, what the facts are, uh, whether he actually pointed his gun at the person in the automobile and the person in the automobile felt the need to, you know, shoot him before he was shot or whether he didn't be interesting to see whether the person was just trying to get from driving the car was just trying to get from point A to point B, or he was, you know, trying to intimidate people with his vehicle and keep them from protesting. Um, so there's a lot of stuff not known and, and hopefully we, we will eventually know it. And when we do, we can probably form some better opinions, but the, the, what you said, I think James is appropriate, no matter what we find, which is how human life is lost. And that's a shame. Yeah. It's these things, these emotionally charged, uh, situations, these rallies or protests, especially nowadays where you've gotten Antifa and the agitators who are kind of deliberately going there, ratcheting up agitation, they can go sideways so fast. And so you have to be very careful about, you know, where are you going to go and who you want to, who you're going to align yourself with essentially, you know, because you can get in, in over your head and, you know, you can go for a peaceful protest and it can turn ugly really quickly. And you end up just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, you know, tragedy happens. I think it's important to remember that, uh, first of all, I, I support the whole Black Lives Matter movement. I support the uh, right of blacks and sympathetic uh, people from other races to uh, to protest. I think they're doing the right thing. Uh, I think the uh, protests have been largely peaceful. They have been used as uh, an excuse to uh, rabble rouse by splinter groups who are not particularly interested in Black Lives Matter. They're just interested in pushing their own agenda. The danger that I see is that as these protests become violent or are instigated in be into being violent by federal agents, which is going on in Portland as we speak, uh, it will turn into a gift that keeps on giving for the Trump law and order campaign uh, because Trump is very, uh, very deliberately playing upon fears of people uh, of riots in the streets everywhere. Uh, it's kind of it's, it goes back to the old uh, Pete Wilson. You know they're cutting. You know they're they're, they're who, who uh, 
uh, ran com- campaign commercials back in the, I guess, back in the 80s or early 90s, I forget, saying that uh, the immigrants are coming over the border. They just keep coming and coming and coming. It was a fear-based tactic. Uh, that's what Trump is doing. He's using a fear-based tactic, uh, playing upon the violence that uh, exists in these protests. So uh, peaceful protesters, I think, have to be extremely careful that they weed from their ranks anybody that uh, is uh, an arsonist, a looter, or uh, an otherwise a troublemaker, and keep them peaceful. Otherwise, it's going to play not to their advantage, but to Trump's advantage. And may I may I ask you a couple of questions about that, Richard? I don't. I have no. I have no problem with with um, keeping the Gestapo under control. But it's my understanding from doing some reading that I've done that that a lot of people who live in areas where there's uh, you know where there are constant protests, where that there's uh, that they're you know basically uh, in fear. You know they can't. They're fearful for their business, their property, their livelihood, their wives, their children, their mothers, and and so and the local police are are not doing um, the job of keeping. Well, keeping the peace isn't their job, but keeping people safe. I mean, keeping people safe is their job. And and I'm not saying that then 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 you know the 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 uh, federal Gestapo should come in when the local police aren't doing their job. But the same thing, um, you know, there when the Rodney King thing happened in um, in L.A. many many years ago, Rodney King was horribly treated. Uh, brought up the same kind of thing. You know, I mean, black people are 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 brutalized you know, more percentage wise than, than, um, you know, based on, on their percentage of population than white people. They're also arrested more and, and, uh, go to prison more and all the rest of that. And, and he, and Rodney King was horribly brutalized by the cops and probably led to his, you know, his, uh, early death uh, in many ways. But, um, that, that town burned and, and, uh, especially, uh, immigrant, businesses owned especially for some reason by Koreans in LA were targeted and the cops basically sat and watched them burn and so I'm I'm that's that bothers me what do you, what do you have to say to that Richard well I'm sure there's some truth to the fact that some people in some neighborhoods are worried about the police not doing their job and I think what you have to look at is and, and there's some uh, and then there's some uh, just uh, stoking of fears uh, in, in that regard as well. I have a, uh, a nephew who lives just blocks from uh, Lake Street, where all of the uh, uh, riots were taking place on the original uh, Black Lives Matter riots in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. And even though he lived only a few blocks from the, the, the center of all of the, the rioting, he, he was never, ever in fear of any problem with his own property or with his own neighborhood. Uh, they were pretty limited uh, in the, uh, the the rioters were pretty pretty were pretty did a pretty good job of targeting the people that they wanted to protest against. Not that I'm, uh, now what about uh, what about here in Sacramento where where uh, commercial businesses were targeted for looting? You know, basically that, that uh, obviously, happened. as I said earlier, the the people who are protesting peacefully need to police their own, uh, and I think you, you have to recognize that the police are overburdened with all kinds of jobs that they never should have, talking about uh, the all, all of the vice laws, whether it's drug crimes or prostitution crimes, uh, all of these crimes that are on the books that take away uh, man hours that the police should be uh, dedicating to actually preventing against uh, force, burglary, theft, fraud, uh, the things that people really do care about. Those are the things that people care about. That's where police should direct their act- efforts and to the, and the, the, the fact that they are uh, sidetracked by a whole lot of other uh, peripheral victimless crime issues is one reason why police forces uh, are not as effective as they could be. Yeah, I'll absolutely agree to that and add something to it. I think um, I was reading some articles about how much revenue is generated by fines. Uh, some, in a lot of these big cities, you know, they rely on fines, which police officers have to basically enforce, collect. They write the tickets. Uh, so instead, like you said, instead of spending their time defending property or defending people's lives, 
or or researching you know there's so much fraud going on now that probably electronic crime units and most police forces should be I don't know 10 times as big as they are and if they you know stopped writing fines for people selling uh, uh, you know single cigarettes out of a pack I was that was a you know another incident so you're absolutely right and I think it, it maybe I'm wrong correct me on this gentleman but the the uh, police brutality incidents that have really ignited especially aimed at blacks that have really ignited um, this this fire that should have been lit and and should still be burning the protests were were all correct me if I'm wrong, for what we would consider a minor, not even something that should be against the law. I mean... Yeah, um, I mean, you're talking about in, in Atlanta, the guy was drunk and I fell, fell asleep in, in the in his car and in, in an altar or a Wendy's uh, drive through For that, he was shot in uh, the, the case in New York where a guy was selling Lucy cigarettes. He was strangled, essentially. The guy in Minneapolis was uh, strangled for uh, allegedly passing a $20 a counterfeit bill, not uh, the list goes on and on. Most yeah. of the crimes that people are going after, or the, the the points of contact that result in death and mayhem, are for things that probably shouldn't a shouldn't be a crime, or b should be handled in a in a, in a, in a non confrontational manner manner. Uh, and and you bring you bring up fines for uh, traffic offenses for minor traffic. Hmm. Traffic, yeah. parking, you know, speed traps are right. speed traps are a thing, and yeah. uh, particularly in a lot of jurisdictions, are more and more and more depending upon fines and civil asset forfeiture mm -hmm. to uh, to fund police departments, which is an absolute, which is basically legalized highway robbery. Well, let's not forget parking fines. I get fined for parking in front of my own house. So, you know, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's it's and in the neighborhood, it's it, the way the parking things are. They set it up so the hospital parkers, you know, hospital people don't park in the neighborhoods. But, of course, they park here at night when there's no traffic enforcement. So the only people that get traffic tickets, or I mean parking tickets, are people who don't get their little sticker on time and park in front of their own house. And it's just, it's a whole neighborhood issue around here where the, just the continual, it's the nickel and diming of essentially the poor neighborhood. You just kind of continually nickel and dime because, you know, people move in and out all the time. I've had two of my neighbors just moved out this month. And so we're going to get new new members in here, new new renters across the street. And nobody ever knows that, you know, one side of the street is two hour parking. The other side of the street is no parking. And so they'll get their traffic tickets because they'll get their parking tickets because they will. But talking about how uh, overreach Trump is going full bore on executive orders. Apparently, Richard, he's been signing executive orders like all the other executives in the country at a rapid pace. What's your yeah, and uh, it was uh, sparked by uh, the, the DACA uh, Supreme Court decision. Uh, in the Supreme Court, in the DACA decision, uh, the Supreme Court upheld Obama's uh, executive order to uh, create DACA, which was uh, the uh, decision to uh, allow children who were born in this country or who were immigrated to this country as children to remain here, uh, which is a very good policy uh, decision by Obama, but it wasn't made uh, in a uh, legislative way. It was, a, it was an executive decision as opposed to a legislative decision. Uh, and it was upheld by the Supreme Court. So uh, Trump, under the uh, uh, advice of John Yu, uh, famous for uh, being the person who justified uh, 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 it, it, abuse of interrogation, yeah, waterboarding and other abusive interrogation techniques, uh, he said, well, okay, if it's okay for Obama to uh, issue executive orders that uh, can't be uh, countermanded, then it's fine for Trump to do the same thing. And he told Trump that. So Trump is doing it. He just issued uh, the uh, uh, order, executive order, saying that Immigrants don't have to be counted uh, in the census uh, when the Constitution very clearly says you're supposed to count people, count the persons that reside, not uh, voters, not citizens, not any other uh, category, but count the persons. He's saying, no, no, those persons don't count. We're just going to count native born, or, you know, people who are actually uh, natural born or, or uh, legalized citizens. 
that's an executive order that he can he, he thinks he can get by with. He may. I don't know. If the Supreme Court is consistent in saying executive orders are just fine and dandy, he'll he'll probably get by with it. And other, you know, there are a number of other areas that he's uh, made executive orders in as well. And he's uh, promised to make times very interesting for uh, his uh, opponents by uh, doing things that he could never do legislatively by doing them uh, as an executive. Just like uh, Obama uh, was famous for saying, oh, I've got a pen and I've got a phone. Yeah, I just I just checked while you were talking. Uh, I was listening, so don't, don't get me wrong. 35 executive orders this year. So, um, yeah. And I'm- and that, Yeah, and that was before the DACA decision came down. It'll be more, I guarantee yeah. it. And it'll no, really gotta, off the left. I've, I've, I've tried to figure this out and maybe I just didn't do enough research on it. So uh, I understand. So the one of the important things the census does is identify where I'd say our resources get to be stolen and given back to. Uh, I was going to say, you know, government funds are allocated, but let's just be truthful. They take money out of my pocket and give it to somebody else. Uh, you know, I'd like it to come back to me tenfold, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't. So um, on the basis of the census, aren't house seats uh, apportioned? Aren't oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Granted? Uh, yeah. So In other what words, that means if you don't that, count, if you don't count the immigrants, California will lose a few seats. And yeah. I'm sure that's part of Trump's plan. Well, and and so what, you know, and I would say, you know, quite uh, when the founding fathers, you know, came up with all this stuff or founding mothers or whoever it was, founding they, people who are, never mind. It's, it's very confusing. Um, was, was this an issue? I mean, when they, no. person, when they, the, when the yeah. country was new, there were no immigration laws. Right. Immigration laws didn't exist until the 19, well, the first immigration laws were, uh, uh, the first immigration law was a, was a law that was passed back in the, uh, after the, after the gold rush. And it was to uh, discriminate against Chinese, it was an anti-Chinese yes. immigration law. Back in, I think it was back in the 1880s. Yeah. That didn't amount to a whole hell of a lot. It wasn't all that important. But the real uh, immigration laws came about in the 1920s uh, when people were trying to prevent Southern Europeans from coming to the United States because, us, you know, because, you know, obviously Northern Europeans are much better folks than Southern Europeans. And that was mm -hmm. the, uh, the prejudice at the time. Uh, and, but before that, no, there were no uh, immigration laws, certainly not in the, in the, uh, uh, era before the Civil War. <laughs> James, are you having fun over there? Okay. Yeah, well, my, my camera mount has gone haywire on me. Uh, <laughs> I knocked well, my no, mic so I'm, I mean, I caused all kinds of problems. I would, I would then, I would kind of agree with, uh, with um, whether, you know, it's legal or not, uh, Trump writing that executive order. Oh, I, I totally disagree. Yeah. Why should we not have the same immigration laws that the country was founded on? In other words, open immigration, or at least an immigration process oh, no, no, that makes it easy not, for, no, for people to I'm, immigrate. Richard, you misunderstand me. I am not uh, disagreeing that we should have open borders. What I'm, dis what I'm, what I'm saying is that under the current environment, under the current environment, that um, it, it, in my mind, it makes a little more sense to exclude people. If you're going to take my money and send it somewhere, I want it sent to people who are also getting money taken from them. And call me call yeah. me a wishy-washy well, libertarian even, on this one. Even but, even using that argument, you've got a problem there because immigrants, illegal immigrants, undocumented people pay taxes too. They pay yeah. uh, payroll taxes, they pay sales taxes, uh, they pay, you know, just as, you know, they probably pay a, a higher percentage of taxes than those of us who know, uh, who are citizens and know how to work the, the tax loopholes. Should they not yeah. also well, be we've able got some to, other you know, stuff. Particip particip participate in, the, stuff we, in, the, in got... a small amount of largesse that actually does come back? Well, I don't trust them to count properly if you make it too complicated. They can't count their toes. 
And so if you try to tell them how to separate this person from now, oh, forget it, get everybody in a room and count them and they'll still get it wrong. So yeah. no, I, I agree. And you know, that's the, you breathe the next logical step to that is, you know, you're, you're putting these people in charge of dealing with the panic demic, uh, and literally they can't count their own toes. So good luck with the outcome of this whole thing. Yeah. Well, well it's, it's, I don't think the courts will give them this one because it's pretty clear on the Constitution. You count people. You don't yeah. count. It's it's a fairly clear one. So you can't make unconstitutional executive orders. Now, I am no fan of executive orders. Anybody who's heard me talk anywhere, I, this kind of thing shows the danger of us, us having an executive order mindset where we allow our executive orders to govern our executives well, I, to govern I, I, by I, order. That's just insanely I, dangerous. And it's, I agree. I agree. I agree. It. I agree. I don't, I don't, uh, <laughs> I, um, you know, if you want to give me a, give me three hours, I could go down the list of all the stuff that's killing us that isn't constitutional and, and, you know, uh, independent regulatory agencies, there is no such thing as you don't have an independent legislature an independent judicial and an independent executive. How can you have an independent regulatory agency that combines all three of those powers in one? And then how, we got an imperial president. Well, that's, that's, imperial because, uh, president. that's because Congre Congress decided they didn't want to do their job, so they delegated it. That's well, that's because they're spending all their time getting reelected and, yeah. and you know, yeah. adding people's slush funds. So they're I so would, afraid. You know, I, yeah. don't, I have, I'm okay with them spending all their time getting reelected. I just don't want them to do anything else. Don't pass laws. <laughs> don't don't set up independent regulatory agencies. Just just campaign all the time. I'll double their wages if they agree to do that. They, as long as they agree not to pass any laws, and as long as they agree to, to defund all these. Well, I, I think I think we can we can allow them to to repeal laws. That would be okay. Yeah, repeal laws, but not add any new ones until yeah. they get down to ten percent of the laws that we have on the books now. Then they can add a new one. Yeah. How about we just that's my campaign. I'm running for, no, I'm not. I, I'm, yeah. I, yeah, you yeah, don't want to run, John. Trust me. Uh, oh, yeah. We got about, we got five, six minutes left. So let's get to something fun. Um, apparently, the aliens are here back. The the administration, you have some secret Navy group that has was supposed to be disbanded in 2012, but apparently wasn't. And they're now going to be issuing reports every six months on, UFOs, apparently. It's mm -hmm. a strange thing. And apparently in the New York Times, one of the guys who's retired from this group has said we have spaceships that are... No, he didn't say spaceships. He said Debris. we have things that are out of this world, that are not from this world. Mm -hmm. I think that's what he said. Artifacts yeah. that are not from this world, if I yeah. get the exact... I, I'm wondering if I need to be worried. Maybe my cover is being blown. Yeah. No, Richard, we've known... We've known you're not of this world for a long time. Oh, and and yeah. uh, if you were under the assumption that people ever believed that you were born on this planet, you're self-delusional. But yeah. hey, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, now that explains it. That explains it. Explains a lot of things. Hmm. Or that's what do it. Anyway, uh, I think that's pretty cool. And there's, I've, since I write science fiction as well, I haven't published any science fiction. I, I uh, keep tagging at it and putting the book aside and bringing it out. You know, there there's a lot of, of uh, deep thinkers out there, people who are uh, pretty good statisticians with uh, hard science degrees who will tell you that statistically there's between 10,000 and a billion uh, sentient life forms in this galaxy alone. I mean, different ones, not just entities so you know the idea that that uh you know we know everything there is to know about physics we don't even know about more than half of the universe is composed of dark matter and we don't even know anything about dark matter so how can we know whether there's aliens the idea that somebody couldn't figure out a way to get something here to check out this uh this out of the way arm of the spiral nebula is kind of crazy to me i i think uh, they probably are and and uh and if not at least we're employing some military people in something what that i consider fun instead of killing people all the time so let them have at it and i think it's great that's my opinion well i think it does kind of explain why the created space force type thing it's kind of a goofy why do we create space force but now maybe there's actually an underlying reason for it <laughs> well, I mean, you know, why? You know? I don't know. It's it, it, the, the question I have, though, is why they created 
uh, Space Force u uh, uniforms that are camo rather than black. Mm. Yeah, I don't well, um, apparently, when they go through the Stargate, uh, they're they're going to need to arrive uh, in camo, and all the planets they have the eight symbols on the Stargate adjusted to are so Earth-like that our camo works there. I see. Got it. Thanks. Thanks for elucidating. <laughs> Did you say hallucinating or elucidating? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least, you know, we can find some. I told somebody the other day that I did not, I, I was only having ABC conversations. And they said, what? I said, anything but COVID. And we didn't have anything to talk about. And I'm, well, and I'm glad we're anything. finding something else to talk about. Uh, so, yeah. you know, why not? It's Space alien. Force, camouflage. It's, alien. Well, we should have the clowns back, right? What was it last year? It was the clowns. It was the scary clowns, and now we get the aliens. Aliens are better than scary clowns. Oh yeah, scary clowns. Scary clowns scare little kids, and aliens just make for good news. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be interesting. As far as we know. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, if you really wanted to look at it, if you look at how bad governments have screwed up the planet in the last hundred years and how illogical it is to even have them in place, you would think that um, there is some hidden lever going behind the curtain to make things this bad because um, you take all these crazy governments out of the way and, and the planet would be a utopia. Oh, wait, that sounds like a book I'm writing, but that's a whole different subject. Okay. To an alien utopia book. That sounds very interesting. <laughs> Don't fall asleep on me, James. It's Don't the aliens, man. It's what's that aliens guy? We're, we're killing 30 seconds here, is essentially what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think we killed way more than that on this show, actually. Yeah, yeah no, I know. I, I started the fun topic a little too early, and so now we've got it 30 seconds to kill that we're just going to have to vamp and fill time as yeah. any way we yeah. can. Well, tell, tell people where they can watch the show. That's what I always I used to suggest. <laughs> Well, so that's as we get to the end of the show, you can thank these guys for coming out. You can go to libertariancounterpoint.com to check on the, the show and the podcast. We have we now have the Libertarian Counterpoint community podcast. So you can check that out. You can also go to this little we got this anchor fm slash libertarian counterpoint. You can come and you can listen to the show and the podcasts. We're on all the various podcast networks. You can catch us on YouTube and all those various things. And Thank you for watching Libertarian Counterpoint. And from all of us here at Libertarian Counterpoint, thanks for watching and love everybody. Oh, thank you for having me on the show. Thank I you, really James. I thoroughly Talk enjoyed again. this, James. Richard, thank you for your, your uh, illuminating, illuminating uh, thoughts, as always. I appreciate it. Now that I understand that you are actually an alien, I understand some of the tangents that you've been on recently. Um, and after the show's over, I have questions about your home world. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. This is Gail Morgan thanking you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint each Thursday at 8 p.m., Channel 17 on Comcast, on YouTube, and on Facebook. We invite you to come again next week for the Libertarian Counterpoint.